Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. Today's question is inspired by our course Query GA for Data in Google BigQuery, but it goes a bit beyond that as we twiddle around with Google Cloud Platform components to build a sort of a data pipeline, but not quite. Here's today's question. How do I run a scheduled query in BigQuery as soon as the GA4 daily export is complete for any given day? So the idea here is to create kind of a trigger mechanism that as soon as the Google Analytics 4 daily export hits your BigQuery tables, you run a scheduled query on that data. Typically, the use case is you want to flatten that data or create an accumulated user table or something similar. Something where you can just grab data from one table and turn it into another format in another table. But the key here is that the BigQuery daily export can be so unpredictable. It can happen almost at any given time during a day. It would be very difficult to set a certain time for the schedule. So instead, we need to build a trigger mechanism. For this video, it's really important that you check the accompanying blog post as well, because some of the concepts are super complicated and I explore them in greater depth in the blog. And I'll have all the code snippets available for you to download from the blog post itself. My goal in this video is to have a query like this, which essentially flattens the GA4 table into a more usable format for me and have this run exactly at the moment when GA4 does its daily export. So as soon as GA4 exports its daily data into Google BigQuery, I want this query to run, take that export data and update my flattened table. The output will look something like this. So we have users, we have sessions, we have acquisition source and medium, session source and medium, and some revenue metrics as well. The composition of the query isn't that relevant here. What's relevant is that we want this to run dynamically every day at this precise moment when the daily job happens. The scheduled query that we're going to build is going to be dynamic. It's going to be triggered when the daily job happens. We can't use a fixed time schedule query because the BigQuery export is so unpredictable when it actually lands into BigQuery. There's no way to actually build it in such a way where you would be guaranteed to always have access to the correct data. So we're going to save this as a scheduled query. Before we do that, we're going to change a little thing here. So currently it takes a look at what the date of today is, and then it takes the yesterday's data from BigQuery. We're actually going to have to change this to something more dynamic because the today's date is going to be a dynamic concept. It's possible that today's date will actually reference a date in the past because Google Analytics 4 has a tendency to update historical tables as well. So we're going to add here a little placeholder. It's at run date. This will become relevant a bit later when we start building the scheduled query system itself. So let's schedule this, create a new scheduled query. Let's give the query a name. We're going to schedule it to on demand. So we're only going to run this query when we actually trigger this somehow. There won't be a time based scheduling at all. We're going to create a destination table. We're going to create a new data set first. Let's call that analytics flattened. We're going to store this everything in the European Union. You don't have to touch the other options, or at least I won't in this example. The table ID is going to be events underscore. And now we want the table ID to be dynamic as well. So again, if the table we're going to be processing is in the past, we want this table to be named the same way. So here we're going to add some dynamic variables. So this table suffix is taken from the runtime of the scheduled query. And as I'm going to show you, you can actually manually set the runtime of the scheduled query to be in the past too. This is all a bit confusing now, but it's going to make a lot of sense. Runtime and run date are related. They are both parsed from the runtime of the scheduled query. We're going to offset it by minus 24 hours. So this is to make sure that the name of the table where we'll be outputting the data is the same as the name of the table we grabbed the data from in the GA4 export. And then the format. Whoops. And then the format will be year, month, date, same as the GA4 export. We don't have to do any partitioning. We're just going to do an overwrite job. So if there are multiple load jobs to BigQuery, we want to run this query again and then just pull the latest data from the table and overwrite the current table in BigQuery. And we're going to save this in EU as well. We're going to click details to just take a look at the scheduled query. 
In the configuration tab, you can see more details. We're going to be needing this config ID at a later time. So keep the schedule query open in this tab. So the next thing we need to do is somehow trigger this scheduled query when the load job happens. There's no easy way to do this, unfortunately. It would be cool if you could have this type of internal trigger mechanism in BigQuery itself, where you could fire a schedule query when some other query happens or where some load job happens. But in this case, we're going to have to go through a number of different steps. What we're going to be doing is we're going to go into logs and wait for the load job to complete to appear in the list of logs. And as soon as it appears, we're going to forward that log to a publisher subscription topic, a pub sub topic, which can then be digested by something else. So right now, we want to look for a certain type of log and we want to forward that to a pub sub topic. So we're going to go to logs router and we're going to create a sync. A sync is essentially a way to route certain logs into another destination. So the sync name is going to be GA4 daily export complete. The sync destination will be PubSub, so cloud PubSub topic. And we're going to create the topic right now. And the topic ID will be GA4 daily export complete. You don't have to touch the other options. Just click create topic to create the topic. Once the topic is created, click next. And now in the build inclusion filter, copy paste the logs inclusion from the accompanying blog post. This query here will look for logs that have a BigQuery job completed. They were set by the Firebase Measurement Service account. They are specifically targeting your data set. So remember to replace this with your data set ID. And they are looking for tables that start with events underscore followed by numbers. So we're going to ignore intraday load jobs if those even appear in the logs. Click next to continue and then create sync. So just to remind you where we are right now, we have a log router that looks for the load job complete entry in your cloud platform logs. As soon as that entry appears, it forwards that log to a pub sub topic that we just created. So the next thing we need to do is have something react to that pub sub topic and then fire the scheduled query. So for this, we're going to be using a cloud function, which is a serverless system running in the Google Cloud Platform, a serverless utility, which runs on demand. And in this case, the demand is generated by the pub sub topic. So in cloud functions, click to create a new function. Remember to enable any APIs if necessary. We're going to be using the first generation of cloud functions. There are newer versions available, but the benefit of this older generation is that we get to learn a lot about different cloud components while we build it. And that's a great lesson to learn. So we're going to call the function run scheduled flatten query region, choose whatever works for you. I'm just going to take a European region. The trigger is going to be pub sub. So choose that from the list of available triggers. And the topic is going to be the one that you just created. If you want, you can check retry and failure that will attempt to run the function again for seven days in case it runs into an error. So I'm just going to check it and then click save. You can ignore the runtime build connections and all the other configurations. We're just going to go straight to writing our code. Keep node 16 as the runtime. We're going to do this in JavaScript. In package.json, you're going to have to add a dependency for the BigQuery data transfer service. At the time of this video, the latest version is 3.1.3. The BigQuery data transfer service is what's actually going to run the scheduled query. So we're going to use that to trigger it. In the index.js file, copy paste the code from the blog notes and then update the entry point to run scheduled query. Let's take a quick look at this code. First, we're going to have to update the project ID to match the project ID where your scheduled query is. For config ID, you need to go back to your scheduled query. In the configuration tab, copy the GUID at the end of the resource name. This is the identifier for this particular scheduled query. For region, check which region your scheduled query is running in. Europe is mine, so the region for that is EU. If you're running in the United States, the region would be US and so on. This code is a bit messy because it has to do some transformation magic with the date. What it does is it takes the destination table ID from the log entry. This is then generated into a date object for the following day 
of the table ID. So if the table ID is November 29th, this date object will match November 30th because we want to set the runtime of the schedule query to the day after. And this is now where it becomes relevant why we added those runtime minus 24 hours and run date things into the query. We want the runtime of this query to pretend to be the date after the BigQuery export, the date after the table that was created. Our query is always looking at yesterday's table. So that's what all of this code does. It creates a Google protobuffer timestamp. Again, a very clumsy way of doing it, but it's just unfortunately necessary at this time. And then it runs the query, setting the runtime to what I just described. So the date following the export destination table. When you're ready, click deploy. And this is going to take a while. We're going to wait for this little spinner to turn into a green check mark. Once the check mark turns green, your function is active and waiting for those PubSub events to trigger it. So now all we have to wait is for the next daily job to happen, and then we'll see if our setup works. So it's been a while now, so let's take a look if our setup worked. First of all, you can see the analytics flattened data set, which was the target of my scheduled query, and it has a table called events with one entry. So this looks very good. It looks like a table was created for November 29th. And when I preview the data, it looks like it's all there. So the scheduled query did seem to take place. A great way to review this is to open the project history tab in the BigQuery UI. So here you can see the GA4 export load jobs from the Firebase service account. And they've happened in the evening of November 30th. And some seconds after each load job, there's my scheduled query running. So this means that it really does work. So now you might wonder, should I only configure this to run once per day so that you don't get additional scheduled queries? Well, I don't recommend that because the GA4 export can happen for a reason multiple times a day if new data is added, if old data is patched, if bugs are fixed, and so on. So with the scheduled query set to overwrite mode, it just means that as soon as the daily table is loaded, it overwrites the same daily table in the flattened database. So it doesn't matter if it runs multiple times per day. But now that you have the cloud function running with the daily job trigger, you can use it for other things as well, such as ad hoc queries using the BigQuery API, or you can do append jobs. You can start entire data pipeline systems from the cloud function itself. A cloud function is super powerful. You can use it for whatever you want to do in the Google Cloud Platform and beyond. Anyway, this has been hopefully an instructive walkthrough of how this all works. Remember to check the blog post for more details about how to set this up and enjoy working on the Google Cloud platform and building your own simple data pipelines.